I am Shebun Odegbami, your host on 90 Minutes with Mathematical 7. Um, it is special because I have a very special story to tell. I have very special guests who are going to be with me. I have some very special songs that I'm going to play for the benefit of the listener. And I shall be doing a special reading myself, you know, an unpublished script for the first time. Um, last Thursday night, for those who follow the programs that I do, you would notice that um, the sports parliament did not hold. And it is because uh, NTA are giving way, are giving the time belt for that program to new political exigencies that the present times demand. Politics are more important these days than any talk on sports. So we concede that to them, even though we are still planning that from next week, um, whilst the program would not be on for a couple of weeks on Nigeria's largest television network, Africa's largest television network, NTA, it will be live on Eagle 7 Sports Radio, both on terrestrial and will be streamed online from next week, Thursday, the Sports p Parliament, so you won't be missing anything. Um, so that was disappointing that we missed that show. But beyond that, um, yesterday was one kind of a day, so ah, there was um, no fuel, there was no electricity around. Uh, my Wi-Fi at home was affected. My banking, mobile banking application did not work. We couldn't get money from ATM to do anything. The banks were clogged with humanity. And so on and so forth. So I just chilled. I just decided to chill. I couldn't even write and keep my column for the week you know, which should have been in today's Vanguard, Guardian, and so on and so forth. So I had to call all the editors to tell them to please rest it because I was going to rest from all the stresses and, uh, you know, strains of life generally. But today is different. Today is special. Um, about two weeks ago, I received a letter from the office of the Vice Chancellor of the Federal University or yeah, kitty. And um, I believe that now it just suddenly has changed my mind. Just suddenly has changed my life, not my mind, my life, that letter. Because since then, things have never really uh, been the same. Okay, so I will be doing that reading. It is unscripted, really. Um, because, well, I scripted it. But it is not going to be published at all. It is just a reading that would lead us into the conversation I will be having with, uh, I think, one or two of my guests this morning. Um, definitely one of them, uh, Professor Clement Igodalo Erumosele. He's my very, very good friend. He's a scientist. He's a political activist. He's a columnist. And um, he, he, he works, he lectures at the, the FUNAB, that's the Federal University of Agriculture here in Abdel Kuta. So he'll be joining me soon, and we shall be sharing exciting banter about my life. So I'll be doing a lot of reading this morning. Uh, it is part of the program itself, so don't worry. The reading will lead us to music, will lead us to conversations, will lead us to so many other things. This is Eagle 7 Sports Radio, reaching you from downtown Abelkuta in the Kwansheke area. That's the most energetic part of this ancient town. If you haven't been to this area, please find time to come. Our sports lounge is down there. You can meet me. We can share you know, some communion over drinks and chop and just have a good time generally. So welcome to 90 Minutes with Mathematical this Saturday morning, coming to you from Eagle 7 Sports Radio and transmitting also, it's being streamed live on eagle7fm.com. 
Last week, I received the good news that the Federal University Oyeikiti is offering to confer on me an honorary doctorate degree in human kinetics on February 11, 2023. The reaction of all those that heard and read about it has been resounding a deluge on the airwaves and on social media with very kind words and goodwill messages that can melt even Pharaoh's hardened heart. I have been overwhelmed with emotions. I do not know how to fully appreciate the completely unsolicited for honor by the university. And this appreciation, not just to the public or even to the university, but to the creator of the cosmos, who took this little bush boy talking to you this morning from the deep hinterland of Nigeria and threw you him into the heart of one of the most sophisticated cultures on earth, Yoruba land, and left him to wonder even with the talent that he was gifted with by the creator. In the past few days, I have had to psychologically manage the deluge of goodwill messages from fans, family, friends, and even foes pretending to be anything but, and held myself in check from exploding with the excitement of such lavish acknowledgement for this exalted honor coming from the blue. At the end of the day, the feeling that filled the core of my being is that of gratitude, gratitude to the Almighty. Well, this story starts from Joss. I'm going back to Joss in 1970, the year that the Beatles, the greatest band in the world at the time, did an epic song which has become really spiritual now because it speaks it speaks to me it speaks into my life it's a great thing to listen to um, this is an afrocentric station but from time to time we we'll go beyond our afrocentricism and um, admit those who speak our language the title of the song is let it be let it be um, the creator of the universe just let it be because I had no idea where my life was going to head. So enjoy this. Let it be. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be. Let it be, whisper words of wisdom, let it be. When all the broken hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, let it be. For though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer, let it be. Oh, let it be.
myself in times of trouble Mother Mary comes to me Speaking words of wisdom Let it be And in my hour of darkness She's standing right in front of me Speaking words of wisdom Let it be Let it be This is Eagle 7 Sports Radio, 103.7 FM. In times of trouble, oh Lord, let it be. That was um, a great song by the Beatles. It speaks to my story, speaks to my spirit. So when I left Joss, by the way, this is Eagle 7 Sports Radio once again. I must never forget. And you can join us in our conversation when it is time to do so on 0700-2255-1037. Once again, 0700-2255-1037. You'll be able to join uh, my guest and I. He's already in the studio. So, when I left Joss, a fledgling 17-year-old boy, freshly minted at St. Murumba College in Joss, and I followed my late cousin, Tunji Odegbami, the ITT guru. Most people know him. He's the one Odegbami that was more popular than myself. <laughs> I followed him to Ibadan. I was going to prepare to um, enter the University of Ibadan for my prelims. And when I left Joss, I was actually venturing into the unknown, totally unprepared for any of the things that have become my life today. I didn't have the foggiest idea that anything that I'm doing today, I would do when I was leaving Joss. My only thought at the time was fulfilling my father's wish to get a proper education and become either a lawyer, like the great Yoruba sage and political leader, Chief Obafemi Awulowo, or an engineer. And my father never stopped drumming that into the ears of all of us, his children, until it became almost a sing-song tune. And I know when I came down to Ibadan that that same song was all over Yoruba land <laughs> with Yoruba families. It's a rich tradition of their ancient civilization. They believed in education. They believed in their culture. And they captured it in so many ways. Let me lead you into that life of the Yoruba with a song that may not speak to it directly, but clearly demonstrates the rich history and culture and sophistication of the Yoruba person. It is done by my friend, Jimmy Sholanke, Uncle Jimmy Shura Sholanke. Just enjoy this song. Urula <laughs> Dubo. Enjoy it.
Welcome back, Eagle 7 Sports Radio, and this is Mathematical, 90 minutes with me this morning. So that's how I was thrown into the thicket of deep and rich Yoruba tradition and culture, and in fact, civilization. You know, <laughs> Yoruba is, I don't know, that's one tribe in the world that is truly, truly unique. I've been to several parts of the world back and forth, back and forth. And I can tell you that here in Yoruba land, um, the level and depth of civilization is almost unparalleled in the world. But you need to come here to come and see yourself. How we have now become what we are today, me, I do not understand. But yes, I was thrown into the thicket of Yoruba land. And uh, football came along a few months into my sojourn in Ibadan. It was more a recreational part, pastime than anything else on my mind on the campus of the Polytechnic Ibadan, where I ended up studying mechanical engineering. Um, it wasn't Polytechnic at the time, it was the Technical College. And you don't want to go into that whole story. But before long, football started to fetch me a small income here and there that was to change my life forever. I love to play the game in my spare time. A few friends took me to join a small club in Ibadan. And that move started to fetch me the occasional bonuses and transport fares that became some useful income that I never dreamt I could ever have. Soon, the club, NTC, started to win matches and some honors and threw me into the whirlpool of popularity around town and on the campus. Both were to alter the trajectory of my life forever. But let me try and cut that long story short. Three years after leaving Joss, I was invited to the national team of Nigeria. <laughs> national team of Nigeria. That was, you know, because I played for the West at that time. 
at the first national sports festival in 1973. You know, I was 21 and I was in school. Well, I was doing my IT at WNTV, WNPS at the time. And I was invited to the national football team of Nigeria. It was an impossible dream coming true that cold hammer time period in December of 1973. The transformation of my mind from academic scholarship to new possibilities was conceived and molded in that totally unexpected invitation, which was an appreciation of my talent in football. I suspected then that there would be a price to pay and a sacrifice to be made. The national team in Lagos is not where you remain as a student in Ibadan. And until last week, and for the past half a century since then, that is in 1973, I have not been certain if my decision then was right or wrong until now. That is the significance of the honor bestowed on me by the Federal University of Yeikiti last week. My life since I stopped playing football in 1984 was never properly charted. I had ventured into several small businesses. You don't even want to know. I was selling Coca-Cola as a distributor. I was a cement distributor. I owned a restaurant. I owned a dry cleaning service. I, I was just doing all manner of things. Even as a football player, it was response to my fear of failing in life much later in the absence of better grounding in education. Good grounding in education, I knew, was the key. But here I was, making a choice of going to the national team and playing football or continuing with my education. So I went into football cautiously, very afraid and with justification too, the lives of those that were renowned footballers before me were not a good advertisement for life after football. There were too many uncertainties and ugly scenes in the pictures that I saw of the future. But the national team invitation was too alluring. I gave up going to the West Michigan University Kalamazoo with my four other classmates at the Polytechnic, where we had all secured admission for our first degrees in mechanical engineering. In choosing to remain in Nigerian football and pursue the newly introduced HND in Ibadan, it was being introduced for the very first time, I knew there would be a price to pay down the line. But I was determined to make the best of my wandering into this virgin territory. So I have been a serial entrepreneur, <laughs> a nomad, and a restless soul for 50 years. The image of a footballer as a school dropout had to be changed. And the only way to do that is for me to earn respect and to be successful. So, from being a full-time football player for 14 years, 1970 to 1984, to browsing through the radar of society for what I could venture into safely and without much risk of ending up a drag and a poor person in society, I searched for every scrap of opportunity in the sports stratosphere to succeed. The fear to fail became my obsession and drove me like crazy. Almost 40 years since I hung my football boots, I have not looked back. Traversing the world of sports, seeking opportunities, and leading the way in what I believed was a lucrative, untapped domestic industry. I became a restless soul, always on the move, 
using the advantages that football offered me to know a lot of people, to study the terrain, and to seek support to establish any line of work related to sports. It happened that I joined Sonia Obazo Jagbase to found the first all-sports newspaper in Nigeria. That became my baptism into the sports business. It became the largest circulating daily newspaper in Nigeria almost 20 years later. Six years after teaming up with Sonny, I embarked on another journey on the side and established a sports company involved in television production. It was indeed uncharted territory, probably the first in the country, a pioneer cutting pathways for all others. I was a voluntary guinea pig of the sports business in Nigeria. That's how I got deeply involved and entrenched in journalism, particularly television. I'd been writing and reporting sports, even as a player, from 1979. I knew, how I, I, knew I, I, was, I had talent in writing. But with my own equipment and studios, I became a practicing journalist without any training learning on the job, from the newsroom to the field, covering events, packaging documentaries, and developing content, mostly new programs in sports on television. Rapidly changing technology also meant trying to catch up with new equipment and so on, a very expensive business indeed. But being a pioneer, it had its own advantages. I blazed the trail in innovation in the sports media, setting the benchmarks for successors, particularly in television. That has been the journey for four decades. Me setting the pace and the standards in specialized sports publications, on television productions, events coverage and organization, consultancy, marketing, merchandising, managing of athletes, administration, well-being and health, and education. 20 years ago, I sought for a license to establish a radio station and also laid down the foundation stone of a sports secondary school and an academy. In 2007, the school admitted its first student athletes. It has sustained till now as probably the only one of its kind in the whole of this country effectively combining sports and academics in equal proportion in the school. The school has had 12 sets of graduates that completed their secondary school education as well as had great sports training. Many of them went on scholarship to the United States, over 60, admitted into colleges and universities on full scholarships. They graduated and many are doing well today and many are in a number of sports-related projects in different parts of the world. A few have become professional athletes and are doing well in Europe and America. Two are playing professional football in Europe. Several, of course, remained and attended some Nigerian universities and polytechnics. Unfortunately, for most of those in this last group, the Nigerians that remained here and went to Nigerian universities and polytechnics, the Nigerian university system does not allow for maximum development of sports potentials in students, limiting their migration into professional sports. It took 18 years for the sports radio license to be granted me. Now it is running well in Abelkuta, and you are listening to me on that sports radio station. In all of my journey traversing the sports planet, there was always a nagging feeling of unfulfillment, of a void in my life, something missing that all the awards, honors, appointments, rewards could not feel. This past week, in a reaction by a few of my friends that I shared this information with, I found the true interpretation of what it means to have an honorary doctorate degree 
of a prestigious university that is neither bought nor solicited for, but earned through the merit of one's work and scholarship. That's why my gratitude is full in every way on this day, particularly to the creator of the universe, whose architectural design of my life he undertook even before I was born. There is no error in my choice of going into football and taking it to the zenith of my capability. Ah, I thank the Lord. I thank the Vice Chancellor, the Governing Council, the Senate, staff, and students of the Federal University of Oyeikiti for adding the last jigsaw to the puzzle of my life. I thank Professor Clement Igudalo. Erumosele, my friend who is here with me in the studio, who last week opened my eyes finally to what now feels that empty void in my life, which today is now absolutely complete. Welcome, Professor Erumosele. Thank you very much, Obi. People think you are still in bed. <laughs> 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 well, Prof, let them hear your voice loud and clear in Abekuta and all over the world. Technology is just incredible. Now everybody can hear you all over the world. And we have a growing audience <coughs> of people who are listening in. And for the first time, they would hear you on our station. Tell people well, what you told me last week. <laughs> yes. Uh, good morning, audience. Before you answer, let me also introduce uh, another friend, another scholar, yeah. a doctor, an economist. Um, I don't know what he's looking for in America because half of the time he's in Nigeria, but he's a visiting uh, lecturer here in, I think so, I'm not sure he will tell us, from the United States of America. He's doctor. He may be a prince. Dakbo Adenekon. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm... Uh, Yes, I came in from America, but uh, the truth is, I'm fully in Nigeria. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I've been in Nigeria now for about 15 uh, years, going back and forth. Um, I'm a central banker. In fact, I just retired from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, as, a, as a consultant, been with them for about eight years. Before that, I was uh, in Ghana, you know, the West African Monetary Institute. Okay. So it's been... Wonderful, marvelous, and I can feel what you mean, uh, what you say when you say uh, that void or the vacuum. <laughs> but we'll, get, we'll reach on that later. <laughs> but thanks for inviting me. I appreciate that. Good morning to you. That's the thank you very much. That's the first thing I'm going to ask Professor Romosele, my friend, because um, last week when we met at the club, and um, I had the information a week before, as we were about to leave depart for the evening um he got up from his seat and i just remembered and i said ah, prof um such and such a thing happened they gave me a letter from so so university and i could just see prof's eyes they just lit up and the man just stretched out his hand to give me a very warm handshake and he made a pronouncement a statement that has changed my life about the value of what that university did. Please tell the world what you told me. Well, let me say thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Yes, indeed, I'm just waking up from the bed. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. We are not used radio, to radio, so not, you are it's, safe. It's not, uh, for me, it's not normal to be awake at this time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, yes, um, First, congratulations mm -hmm. on the recognition by the Federal University of uh, by the Federal University of Yale Kitty. Mm -hmm. um, you said something. It was not solicited for. Now, now uh, they are expecting you to give something in return. Mm -hmm. Simply a recognition. And uh, from the account you just gave you, the narrative. 
which speaks to issues of education, issues of um, career path, issues of aspiration, etc., etc. A whole lot to be recognized um, and to be, and for for which you rightly deserve an honor. Coming from the university and uh, given the processes that usually are involved in providing that, uh, giving that kind of award, when you stood me last week, um, it wasn't that it, it, I was a bit surprised at all. It's simply that um, I know you are a man of humility. I'm not saying it because you are here. You are also a man accomplished in many ways, a celebrity in the, football, in the, in the sports realm, and in many other social realms, as it were. So there's a whole lot to be said in the citation that, they will, be, that will be read for that award. So congratulations. That's mm -hmm. all I will say for now. What is in honoris causas? What does it really mean? What is in it? You, what, you know, <coughs> I didn't read. I didn't go to classroom. I didn't do anything. Yes. You didn't go for a formal study. Mm. Um, you know, the formal study in a particular area for which you earn a degree. Mm. But this is an, uh, an evaluation of the totality of your efforts in diverse ways, sometimes specific ways. Um, it would be interesting to see the, how the citation will read and the focus. They said it's a doctorate in human genetics. <laughs> well, that's tied to your profession. Mm. You know, as a footballer, mm. as a sportsman, as a sports administrator, administrator, et cetera, et cetera. As a proprietor, promoter of sports through education. All of this. So it's specific to, in this case, it is a holistic pa um, package recognizing the totality of your efforts in different fairs of life. Hmm. Prof, thank you. Let me come to doctor. Um, the image of a <coughs> footballer before now, the image of a footballer, in those days, it was not something that any parent would want their child, mm. a profession would want their child to go into. Pro footballers were looked at as outcasts, dropouts from school, people who never did well. And when you looked at the lives of the footballers of old, their lives were not great advertisement mm -hmm. for that profession. Mm -hmm. What has changed <coughs> now? Well, like you said, um, what has changed in terms of football today? You can think of the the business dimension to football, mm. and that, by the way, uh, once Nigeria even realized that the way they see football and practice the business of football will be different, but that's another dimension. Mm. Uh, parents are rushing <coughs> to bring their children to that's come right. and to play football. They right. don't, some of them don't even care that they go to school these days. Anymore. But a lot mm -hmm. are coming to the school to say, look, please help our child to go to get an education and to... Anyway, That's right. just go back into the <coughs> past for us. Into the past. Particularly me, because we are discussing me today. That's right. And um, it's interesting how you say that your trajectory or how, you know, based on previous discussions we've mm. had, your trajectory change from wanting to be a lawyer or an engineer mm -hmm. and by divine coincidence mm -hmm. became or become a footballer because you are still naturally a footballer. <laughs> so God has a purpose. Mm -hmm. God has a purpose for that to happen. That's why he says it's a divine coincidence, is a divine path. And this is why once you realize that, forget about even the award. On a personal note, the mm -hmm. award may be the thing that lighted the, the candle of understanding of that accomplishment. 
but on a personal note, she go dead by me. Our mathematical <laughs> is an accomplished <laughs> person yeah. in totality of everything. You thank God. So you have to really recognize that. Mm. And I can guarantee you that more award is coming. Wow. More recognition is coming. I can guarantee you that. Because mm. whether you know it or not, you have touched life. Okay? So back then, when it is not driven by money, you just do it because the natural talent is there. And that natural talent is what God has given you that germinates and brings you to where you are. So um, in terms of, uh, so it's, it's a little different now because people have now seen that even footballers make more money than the presidents. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, no, no, <laughs> right. So um, that, that, that's how it is. Uh, uh, I, I would, if, if, if life were to be the way life is now, you know, then when I was, t you know, making that decision, I would have chosen to, to play football. Yeah. So that I would be a chill on here. Because all my thinking <clears throat> at the time was about surviving, not That's not right. ending up poor, mm. and so on and so yeah. forth. Yeah. But then the intellectual side is so important. It is so fulfilling, Prof. Yeah. And I wonder, maybe you will help explain it. Why? our institutions, our universities, you are in the university system. The university is honoring me now. And when you go to that university, I'm not sure what is happening there, mm. but go to most universities. You don't see the practice of encouraging that aspect of our life. You know, it, in diplomacy, it is the soft <coughs> power diplomacy. In education also, it is soft power. You know, that aspect of sports and education that drives huge sector of the American em uh, the economy, but doesn't touch anything here because our institutions don't promote it within them. Well, well, it's, well it's, a, it's a metaphor. The situation in the university, um, Nigeria University now, uh, is a reflection of the topsy turvy Nigerian society. Mm -hmm. And um, the university itself is a victim <laughs> of the happenings in the society. The university ordinarily ought to be the beacon, mm -hmm. ought to show the way, <coughs> ought to be promoting advancing knowledge, but in all its ramification, just as we said, sports ought to be an integral part of it. And it used to be. It used to be. Um, but the system is failing, and the university is um, barely surviving. Um, in many ways, um, we can't uh, deliver on the curriculum, <laughs> and um, neither can we then delve into other areas of human endeavor. Wow. That is the fact of the matter. Um, and that's why you come to see crisis. Um, um, repeated crisis in the university system, which is miscon miscon misconstrued by the society as an um, um, irresponsible act. Whereas um, it reflects the deep seated problem that uh, exists in the university system that needs to be addressed. But you can't address those problems in isolation of the natural question, the natural problem. Hmm. Um, they have to be integrated. And that is the problem, really. Hmm. And that's a huge subject to go into. I know yeah. that's your passion. <laughs> and maybe before we go, we will touch it. <coughs> we will touch it. We will touch it a little. But, you know, on the note of our conversation so far, <coughs> it is all about gratitude. Gratitude. Gratitude to the creator. Gratitude to, to God who made all of this, who designed all of this. And I know that Prof is a, is a very spiritual man. So that's why I'm going to play you one song now. Okay. One lovely, lovely song. You too, mm -hmm. Dako, you will like it. Because when I came to Ibano, and um, tele-evangelism just started in Nigeria at that time, mm -hmm. one of the pioneers was Bishop, it wasn't a bishop there, Idahusa. Okay. Yeah. Bishop Idahusa. Mm -hmm. 
you know, he was on television and all that. That was the first person that mm. we, we could see on TV. And every Sunday, there was this song that they would play to usher him into, you know, his tele-evangelism. Yeah. And that song stuck with me. And up till now, every time I hear it, I just recall my youthful days in Ibadan my football days and all of that and all of that. So I'm playing that song. Um, it is not performed by Idahosa. It is performed by Carrie Underwood. Again, we are going away from our Afrocentric music into other spheres. Mm. But I just needed to capture this song and people will understand the kind of spiritual harmonies that drive my being. Enjoy this. It is how great thou art. You all know it. Yeah. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made.
that i'm just speechless you know you know gratitude can never be enough but we have to go on um you can join us in our conversation remember you can call and the number is zero seven zero zero double two double five one zero three seven and you can you know say whatever you want ask whatever questions you want to ask pass your comment but there was a moment in my life when I had to take a decision. I told you about it yesterday, Prof, mm. that I was to go to America to go and study. And I had this choice of remaining, doing my HND here and playing football and not going to America. But something, you know, in, just to follow what you said now, in those days, it was not fashionable to go to America to go and study. True. Those that went to America, mostly, I'm not saying all, most of those that went abroad to go and study were those who could not get admission here because the mm. university system, the standard of education mm. in Nigeria at that mm. time was such that it was so high mm. that you didn't need to go abroad. So there was no incentive to really go abroad. You must pass a comment on that. But let's pick this first call. Let's see who the lucky person is. Hello? 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 Well, it's not there. Your comments. Prof? Well, you're right that... Um, Was that a wise choice for me? <laughs> yes, in, in the circumstance, yes. In retrospect, yes. Um, you just described the scenario. Mm. Those options, the, the, the lure to proceed out was not strong. Mm. Uh, there's no reason to be strong. No, go on, Prof. Um, <coughs> the Hello? Go on, Prof. The, the years gone by and the decline in the educational system has been a tragedy. Um, <clears throat> it reflects on the society, as it were. Um, so you were right not to have taken that decision at that time to proceed to the US or even to the UK. You were right. But um, the, the reverse is the case now. No. <laughs> uh, now they will bribe. We will go into slavery to the go the abroad. The reverse is the case now. Which is a huge, huge, huge tragedy. And that is the question: How do you, how do you change the order? How that do we reverse it yes, again? That's yes. right. To go back to where we were, where, where we were, were yes. where the celebration was about yes, the yes, high, yes. high standards of Nigeria. Anyway, let's try to see if this will work this time. Hello. Hello. Good, hello, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Don't use sir for me, please. This is a radio program. Yes, sir. I'm Giosi Kwabe from Ashero in Avesita. Ashero. What's your, uh, na what's your uh, name again? Yes, I've actually been, I've been listening to you, you know, from Good Morning. Good morning. And our own, you know, great mathematical <laughs> order for me. I've listened to you. Yes, uh, I, I just want to contribute a little bit. Please go ahead. Most of, things, most of the things that you said, sir, I, I thank God I want to bless God in your life, you know. Even with that short music that we just played, it's as if you are taking me to the realm to know that God is truly great. Yes. But then, as regards, you know, your experience with what, you know, you've been sharing that God has been saying all along. You know, because I remember in those days, you know, when you used to play for, you know, for shooting stars and the, and, and the super eagles, you know, the green eagles then, you know, I, we all know, we are all witness to all the, you know, mathematical, you know, dribbling and <laughs> experiment on the field that, you know, God, you know, you know, gave you as a challenge. And look at what God is, because you follow that path that children of today also need to follow. Because we see that children of today, 
they, they don't have the patience that, you know, footballers of those years ahead, you know, of course, had. Because I happen to, you know, to know, because, of course, I'm an in-law to, I don't know, America. And, and I know that, you know, in those days, the endurance, the Mudan Awal and the rest of them, that you people endure, but look at the amount of money, like Scott said, the business with football today, that children of today are not enjoying, but they are still, they are not, you know, even ready to wait. They are, you know, in a hurry to actually make it in life. You know, I really enjoy what you have said, but how I want to ask for, in what manner, in what way, you know, will you, you know, advise children of today, apart from all the, you know, the largest, just like Ustine, you can see the money that is making. Yes, we are we feel proud of him. But for them to be able to manage and also invest very well, so that what happened to the footballers of yesterday? Yes, it's unfortunate. Look at the Akini, look at the way what happened to him. But in which we don't pray, you know, that I thank God for the life of our own mathematical. So the day that God has blessed him with this station that we are now enjoying, what would you advise the younger, you know, the children of you know today? To actually invest what they've made in football to data. Thank you. Have a lovely day. God bless you. Thank you. Prof. Over to you. I will suggest he that. Asked uh, you. No, he asked you. He asked you specifically. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. You, the, okay. Economy. Yeah. Economy. you, the money man, the yeah. economy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you see, it's deeper than, uh, the question is deeper, you know, than, than imagine. Um, what works? in the business of sports is in the US, for example, or in developed world, there is a prerequisite before you can become a professional. You must be in college, university. Hmm. Rarely do you find you have to be extremely talented, extremely, to go from high school to professional sports. Baseball, basketball, mm. American football, soccer, everything. <coughs> it's a prerequisite. When you are in college, you must be on a passing scale. You cannot fail. If your grade drops, they kick you out of sport. Mm. So there is this incentive mm. to be in school if sports mm. is your dream. Mm. So that you must combine you them. Must, yeah. It must be combined. That's the point. Mm. To become a professional. You can play Harlem Trotters, oh, they don't care. <laughs> you know, we're street games. But to be a professional and make money, that is part of the thing. And we all know the role of education in investment later. It's only people like maybe the people we know now, like LeBron James, that would be drawn from high school. Very rarely. Most professionals are drawn from colleges. And we used to have that in Nigeria, where they would draw people from Nuga, you know, all yeah. those things. Mm. I don't know how the thing... So, first of all, the government must provide the enabling environment to appreciate this through regulatory something for, you know, for the, for the professionals. Of course, I'm not saying government should get involved in the business of, of, of sports, but they could provide the environment. And of course, of, I mean, kids of today, they are more driven by pecuniary motive anyway. But that's the, that's the new trend. It's all about money. But at least, fundamentals must be there. And once the fundamental is there, they move ahead. Mm. And that is why post-professional sports, you will see the professionals being in broadcast journalism of sports, what Shifodek Bami is doing today. Mm. So you got to be in school. you got to be educated to do all that. So, the education that our mathematical seven had play a big role mm. in a success mm. after the energy has been going to... Because after physical energy, mm. it is mental energy that comes up now. Mm. But where, you have, where you have an educational system that does not now encourage the combination, that's right. Yeah, so, so that's know. Yeah. you know, so that's the that's the problem, yeah. Prof. So yeah, you raised that point earlier. Yeah. Of, yeah. Of proper blend. Yes. Between education and sports. Yeah. And that's why we have a school. You have been there, Prof. You yeah. came to deliver, yeah. you know, a talk to the children at that time. And they are doing exceedingly well. 
and we give thanks Very to God important. again. Yes, yes, yes. So our conversation continues. Um, the telephone line is zero seven zero zero double two double five one zero three seven. And it's Eagle Seven Sports Radio reaching you from Abelkuta, all the way from Abelkuta. We cannot, but if I if I don't do this, Prof will just uh, kill me. <laughs> I described a scenario yesterday, Prof. I said I could not write my regular column. This is what I have been doing since 1979. 79. I remember back then, you know, where I always look forward to opening the back page, mm. flip the paper twice and see your <laughs> Bami, <laughs> Bami column. Yes. You know, you know I wrote for, guy, for so yeah. many you newspapers. Know, I wrote for, I wrote I wrote for Sunday clearly. Tribune. I wrote for The Punch, mm. The Guardian. You know, th even this day, a few times, <coughs> The Nation mm. and all that. Now I've settled with Vanguard and The Guardian, Guardian and Complete yes. Sports, yeah. of course. Yeah. But, you know, th th as I was saying, I've even forgotten what I was going to you say. You wanted yeah. to say something that uh, you forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. you yeah. see now, Prof will never forgive me <laughs> if we don't bring up the, you know, what's going on around now. I, I gave, I described, I described what happened to me yesterday. There was no electricity mm. in my house, none in the studio. There was no water in my house. The Wi-Fi <coughs> system would not work. Wow. We couldn't collect money from the ATM. The banks were clogged. Nothing was going on. So I could not even just sit down to pen anything, to write anything for the first time in a long time. Mm. It was a frustration that even affected me when I decided to go to the tennis court to play tennis. I got there and I was lifeless. I was just thinking about how difficult life has become. How did we come to be where we are now in this country, in this state, everywhere. Prof, I am <laughs> just sick <laughs> and tired <laughs> of it all. I know it's a big question, and you don't have too much time, but just give us a sample well, of your thoughts. Well, my the, first, the point is that um, if you were flying from Abuja to Lagos, after about 15 minutes at the point of cruising, you will note a little dip, just a little dip at an angle. Um, it's still, the slope is not so much, it's not dramatic. People could still walk around and serve drinks and so on and so forth. But it's descending. Hmm. It's descending on a very long slope, very, very long. But you won't know, you, you won't, won't notice know. it. You won't feel it. Yeah. <coughs> Nigeria has been descending since 1966. Wow. You may have seen the like uh, oscillating up sometime up uh, mm. momentary up momentary down, but descending in the net. Where are we now? We are, we are still we are still descending. <laughs> Rock because bottom. Because we have not changed. It's, it's a trajectory that changed. Mm. That's when they talk about a governance structure is faulty. Yeah, that's the problem. It has it has eaten deep into all fabrics. We well, live we mm. live we live in society and so on and so That's forth. That's right. It's so unfortunate that you know if everything goes. Let's back take to this call. Yeah. You, you just you will just come back and yeah, save yeah. us for this. Yeah. Let's take this call. Hello. 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 Good morning. He's there. On the line. Sawyer. <clears throat> on North Sawyer. Okay. On North Sawyer. Good morning. How yes. are you, sir? Where are you calling I'm from? I'm fine, thank you. I am calling from Olekolebo. Very good. That's just a stone's throw from here. Okay. Your thoughts this morning? I have listened to the program with rapt attention. Hmm. I want to start from where you stopped. <laughs> there is no discussion in Nigeria as of today that politics will not carry through. Absolutely. That is what has torn apart the fabric of Nigeria. Mm. You see, things that should have been professionalized have been politicized. Mm. Example, education. And the politicization of education has affected sports and so many other spheres of Nigeria negatively. Mm. I just want to give two examples. Yep. There was a story that broke about Wilfrid Roma. 
that he was stripped of everything he gathered during school. And the young man is left now with nothing after working hard in school. Now, there is another one of Shaquille O'Neal. I watched his interview. He said each time he had a business meeting and the people, and he meets with the business people and, oh, Shaq, how are you today? And the next thing is they turn to his financial manager and his business manager, Mr. Junior. Mm. And he said, oh, you think I don't know anything? Mm. Because I don't have a master's. To Sorry, I won't interrupt you. No, talk, no, no. That, uh, I mean, um, it's uh, kind of been covered, you know, in the sense of uh, we try to not discuss politics in on air in this uh, in this kind of a thing. But unfortunately, there is no way we cannot talk about government. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. You no, know. Go ahead. So, so I'm just saying that you know, mm, yeah, um, yeah. we may not be personal or no, no, no partisan, or no partisan yeah, into yeah, it to yeah, the issue, yeah, yeah. but we have to drum it that the role of regulatory institutions, etc., and the role of government is critical in all these things. Yeah, mm. yes, yes, and yes, without yes. meddling into politics. So mm. very, very critical. Mm. And what I was also trying to say the other time about, if I may take you back a little, that choice, mm -hmm. whether to go to the U.S., and your decision not to go. Mm. Actually, it wasn't your choice. It wasn't your decision. Mm. It was divine direction. Intervention. You yeah. don't even know why you didn't go. Mm. Yeah. And let's ask, if you had gone, what would my life have become? No, you would never know anyway. Do you know? The you know yeah. I could no, have no, no. president of America. Ah. Have, that's right. <laughs> but oh, what you are dead. doing today mm. in Nigeria, you may not be able to achieve it. Absolutely. That is that is one of the, you yeah, know. Yeah. And um, so that that trajectory that you find yourself, I don't mm. want to say your choice, <laughs> but that trajectory that God we put you. We give God the glory. Glory. Yeah. So that's why we Hello? Say, you know. Hello? 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 Yes. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir? Yes, my name is Tude Kelani, Dr. <laughs> Tude Kelani. Doctor, you see, I like this. Yeah. For the first time, for the first time, Tunde Kilani in his whole life well, would accept would accept a title. A title, Dr. Tunde Kilani. How are you, my brother, this morning? Thank you, Shego. How does it feel to uh, be a doctor? Well, let's forget about uh, <laughs> that. I'm supposed to thank you for narrating your experience, your life. Hmm. So this session this morning, I was walking out and I was listening to you, and I was so inspired that I thought, "Oh my God, I must start to narrate the story of my life to you from journey from Jairukuku de Berefudo hmm. to Doctor Sude Kelani. Wow. The honor bestowed on me by one of the leading private universities in Nigeria, the leading teaching university in Ibadan. Hmm. It's a long journey." And I thought I could delegate this to producer, writers, but I think I'm the best person to narrate. I know I'm not as gifted as you are as writing. Uh, you know, you are a seasoned writer, but don't worry, I will, I will, I will, I will do it. Maybe the first uh, auto video biography <laughs> of TK's work, the story of today's Kelani. So I want that to thank you fantastic. and those eminent people on the program this morning. Mm. And we appreciate you and everything you have done. You have inspired us. And why would I not say doctor when you are also going to be a doctor? <laughs> 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 we soon set up a team. Well done. God a bless team. you, my God brother. Bless you, my thank brother. you for being part of your journey. Thank you. I'm and in Tigra to part. Have, uh, walk with you and to live and listen to you and interact with you. That is what we need. Well, no government, forget government, forget <laughs> all the shenanigans, <laughs> but let us get together and build our society in our own way. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. TK, Dr. Uh, Tudeki uh, Lani. <laughs> so it's, it's a beautiful thing to, to tell your stories. Because mm. Mm. a lot of people, me inclusive, have a lot to learn. 
and to even appreciate, you know, what God has done. Okay, that story, I will still go back to it. You are mother, I understand fulfillment, the sense of fulfillment is a personal thing. But you are more than fulfilled. And you may not know it. You have so many mentees. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you keep just saying like, that. No, I keep saying that. Yeah. You, you, that. you can hear what um, what uh, Dr. Tunde Kelani, our dear Egbo, have just mm. said. You see, you don't know how you rub off on people. And it's not everybody you will know who that you have touched. I'm looking for money. I'm broke. <laughs> you are more than blessed. <laughs> you are more oh than blessed. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? Oh, it's gone. Yeah. No, but the truth is you that, look, blessed. I'm not a rich person, but I'm very wealthy. That's right. You know, and my wealth is in no the people. Is in the people right. around yeah. me yeah. who yeah. do things for me, who are willing to do. I don't have the Naira and Kobo, mm. but somebody's on the line. Hello? Hello, good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, yes, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> yes, yes uh, I just I just to tell you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> I am a man of many parts. So Mr. Yes, uh, Speaker is one of them. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, How are you? Good What's good your good name, good sir? Good morning to the class in there. Well, my name is Victor. I'm calling from Kenta Ibiaba. Okay. Victor. Kenta Abel Kuta. Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, though I did not join the program from the, the beginning, ah, you I, miss I, I now. would like to say the line uh, that I've listened to. Okay. No wonder they never give somebody like you a chance to be in the hammer of affairs. Mm. Because they know that you will turn things around. Mm. And the and the bad eggs will not eat from it anymore. No wonder. I just I mean that I'm just telling you to look in. But I just hope, I hope, I know that I hope that we we'll get this right one day. Amen. Look at your experience as you say, so you have the chance to go to university. In, uh, in America, because, but the standard here, then, the standard here, then, is higher than the one there. That's what people are running to But today, the story is not different. Mm. Just like I say, I hope, I hope we will get it right one day so that we can smile in this moment. Amen. Amen. Thank you very, very much. Well, we are running very close to the end of the show. I just want your final thoughts on the conversation today and a message for all our listeners around the world. Let me start with you, Prince. <coughs> your final thoughts, your final words. Well, I mean, just to appreciate the fact that you're doing what you're doing. Mm. It's very meaningful to people, to those who really have something. So keep it up. Uh, please, I'm I'm glad you have reached the equilibrium to understand that you are a fulfilled person. <laughs> we see it, and I'm glad you have seen it yourself now. Thanks to Prof for that <laughs> for that look yes, when you so, inform him. Yes, that's so, the and the words. That's what, <laughs> that's and right. the words. They are they are cast so, in marble now uh, in my heart. You're doing great. <laughs> um, your mission is not pecuniarily driven, not financially driven. You are leaving a legacy. Mm -hmm. So I think touching people is very critical, and you're doing that. So that's what I just want to thank God in your life. That's it. And um, to appreciate, hopefully, we'll be on the right course in terms of bringing back deep and fundamental education as people to get into also sports. Mm. You know, somewhere along the line, that is very fundamental as well. So thank you very much for the opportunity to to come and hear my thoughts. Thank you, Prince, yeah. Dr. Dakpo Adineko. Prof. Well, thank you. Uh, in all of this, we, the issues of crossroads in an, an individual's life, uh, crossroads at, point at the point at which you take decision. And um, to the extent that you have given your narrative, your reflection, we can see the hand of God these crossroads. That's right. And there are many more crossroads ahead of us. Mm -hmm. And it's our prayer that God will lead us in those at those points at those crossroads. Wow. Hmm. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Professor Clement Gudado Erimosele. 
one time uh, deputy vice chancellor of FUNAB and um, a great friend of mine, great tennis player too. We play tennis together all the time. I thank you for inspiring me. I thank you for accepting me within your sphere. And um, I really feel humbled. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, um, <coughs> we are gradually coming to the end now. And um, there's a song I want to play to just send us out of today's show. Whilst thanking you all for coming, whilst thanking you all for listening in, um, I want to assure all that um, I have embarked on this journey. I've thoroughly enjoyed the journey and um, I will continue to give up my best. And one day, you know, I'm sure when I'm gone and so on, a few things, a, a few good things will still be said about me that I did for humanity and my society and my people here. On that note, that which drives me is inside of me. And it is inside, something inside so strong that is the creator of the universe, that is the creator of the cosmos, that is the all-powerful, that is the all-knowing, that I surrender myself to completely, completely. There's no doubt at all. I don't do anything outside of him. And so, may he be with all of you and touch all of you wherever you are. Amen. That's Amen. something that is inside so strong. Listen to this wonderful song as we leave you <coughs> until next week, Saturday. Bye-bye.